When hard drives started appearing in personal computers in the 80s, they were expensive and didn't offer all that much capacity. While things improved a bit around the turn of the decade, to get a lot of storage still cost you a pretty penny. But in 1991, one company came up with a clever solution for the Macintosh platform that could get you much more storage for a lot less cash. And it came in the form of an expansion card. In the early 90s, the typical Mac came with a 40 megabyte hard drive. This was plenty for the OS, some applications, and a smattering of documents. But if you used your Mac for work, it's likely you ended up with more files than you had space to store them in. So a lot of users turned to floppy disks or other removable media. Of course, this was inconvenient at best. Needing to remember which disk had the file you were looking for and digging it out, and risky at worst, in case the disk was lost or damaged. The problem is that hard drives for any kind of personal computer, not just Macs, were pretty expensive. So what if there was some way to make the most of what hard drive space you already had? That's where this curious product comes in, the Double Up File Compression Card. It was manufactured by Sigma Designs, but included software called Disk Doubler from Salient Systems. Disk Doubler had already launched as a separate software-only product in 1990, and the partnership between the two companies sought to make it much more effective. Disk Doubler was, simply enough, file compression software. You're probably already familiar with the basic concept. Certain kinds of files can be compressed to save space on disk. On Macs from the 90s, the most popular software to do this was Stuff It from Aladdin Systems. But compressing and decompressing files was a manual and sometimes slow affair, so users generally only did it if they needed to transfer data somewhere else. The idea behind Disk Doubler was to make it more convenient. Installing it added an item to the menu bar that let you more quickly compress or decompress data as you worked. It applied to the files in place. That is, once it compressed something, it deleted the original and promised up to a 50% reduction in size, hence its name. There were a few problems, though. First, the actual compression rate was highly dependent on the kind of data you were working with. Text files could see a large reduction in size, but items like photos, not so much. Second, even though using Disk Doubler was pretty streamlined, users still had to manually pick what data they wanted to apply it to. And third, compression was a computationally intensive process. So even though it was faster than Stuff It, sometimes one had to wait while Disk Doubler did its work. Even still, it proved to be a popular product and garnered good reviews. The bit of inconvenience and its cost of $60 US was a small price to pay, literally, compared to buying a larger hard drive. In late 1990, 40 megabyte SCSI drives started at $300, and prices only went up from there. But some power users still preferred the speed and simplicity of just buying one of those bigger drives and they were a very popular accessory. Salient's Auto Doubler add-on sought to tackle at least one of Disk Doubler's chief complaints. It brought on-the-fly background compression, so users didn't need to do anything. Open a file and it would be decompressed automatically, then it would silently be compressed again when not in use. This also alleviated an occasional issue that Disk Doubler users faced, where they'd sometimes forget to decompress a file before copying it to give to someone else, though Salient did offer a free decompression program. But Auto Doubler still slowed down one's Mac, so that's where Sigma Designs comes in. Its Double Up offering included a hardware accelerator in the form of a Nubus add-in card. The card held a Model 9703 data compression chip from Stack Electronics in order to take the work off the system's CPU. 
Stack was no stranger to this task. The 9703 was often built into tape backup mechanisms, and the company came up with the LZS compression algorithm, which went on to become an industry standard. The double up card worked in conjunction with disc doubler and auto doubler to produce a much smoother experience. The LZS algorithm was very efficient, and Salient had added native support for the card. Cost wise, the package was still more compelling than buying a new drive, coming in at a street price of under $200. And Sigma also released a beefed up version called the Bullet, which included a Motorola 68030 processor running at a blistering 50 MHz to give compatible Macs an overall speed boost, though this came at the much higher price of about $1,400. Double Up wasn't just a gimmick either. The card actually did speed up disk doubler by quite a wide margin. A file compressed at 41 kilobytes per second in software, but went almost four times as fast using the card. And this was on a Mac 2CI, already a pretty high performing machine in its time. Perhaps unsurprisingly, Disk Doubler wasn't the only product of its kind. One competitor called SuperDisk from Alyssa's Software launched in late 1991, and while it didn't offer background compression, using it was equally easy. Just add the suffix .s to the end of a file name, and the software would take over from there. That trick also worked with folders. Any file you dropped into one named with that suffix was automatically compressed. And of course, disk compression was an option for PCs at the time too, with many choices available. Daytran's identically named but unrelated disk doubler worked just like Double Up, with an ISA accelerator card and companion software. Stack Electronics was probably the most well-known option, selling its stacker compression software and optional add-on card for roughly the same price as Sigma's Mac bundle. Salient Software had been acquired by 5th Generation Systems in mid-1992, which itself was bought by Symantec a year later. It sat on Disk Doubler, though, including it in software bundles, but not really adding anything new. Through the 90s, disk capacities grew by leaps and bounds, and with that, prices fell. By 1995, one could get a 540 megabyte drive for under 300 bucks. While utilities like Stuff It and WinZip soldiered on for creating file archives to send across this new thing called the internet, tools like Disk Doubler weren't really needed anymore and quietly disappeared. Products like this are one of the things I like the most about computing from the 90s. It was a time when genuine excitement was building for technology, but the hardware just wasn't quite as advanced as people wanted it to be. Creative workarounds like Double Up were earnest solutions to real problems, as silly as they may seem today. But some of those silly ideas, even if they didn't really take off, stuck around to underpin the advanced technology we enjoy today. Turns out they were perhaps just a bit ahead of their time.